Hi everybody, Sam White here, and thank you for signing up for this newsletter. We are so excited that you allow us into your inbox. As I know, as we all know here at Shakespeare in Detroit, you probably get a lot of news, a lot of messages in your email, and we're so happy, we're honored that you have decided to allow us to communicate with you on a regular basis so that you can learn more about Shakespeare in Detroit, what we do, what we've done, and most importantly, what we're planning for in the future. One of the exciting things that we have coming up next is our work in schools, and this means a lot to me in particular. If um, this is your first time tuning into our newsletter or seeing one of our videos, I am the founder of Shakespeare in Detroit and your designated concierge <laughs> to all things SID, S-I-D as we call ourselves. But one of the reasons Shakespeare in schools is so important to me is because I know the impact that it can make on a young life to be exposed to theater, to be exposed to art, and in my particular circumstance, being exposed to classical theater. Specifically, when I was eight years old, my mother gave me the complete works of William Shakespeare Spear and um, it changed my life, you know. Um, she gave it to me because I got in trouble. I was listening to rap music. I wasn't supposed to be listening to it. And she gave me the book as, I guess you could say, a punishment <laughs> for going against what she told me not to do and listening to Salt and Pepper anyway, right? So she gave me this book and at first I was eight years old so I didn't understand the word to the language really, but over time and through repetition and through reading it, uh, consistently, eventually I fell in love with these fantastical, uh, these wonderful, these stories that really um, I could parallel to my own life in some ways and also have a window into someone else's life and also things that would kind of take me away and allow my imagination to thrive and get off my block, get out of my neighborhood through this passport up here, through my brain, you know. My family, we didn't travel a whole lot, but I always tell people by the time I was uh, an adult, I had traveled to all of these places because I had read so much. And one of the things that I had read was the complete work. So I had been to Egypt, I had been to Rome, I had been to all these wonderful places, even though, you know, technically I was on Seven Mile. I had explored the world because I read a lot, which is really, really cool. And so we're excited at Shakespeare and Detroit this fall to embed ourselves in two, possibly three schools in Detroit, two Detroit public schools, and then possibly one Detroit area school, a nonprofit charter school, which is so cool to work with in two of the schools, third through eighth graders, to really um, introduce Shakespeare and introduce theater in a really tangible, approachable way just to give them a foundation with theater exercises and activities that have a STEM framework, right? So things like the science of lighting a space, lighting a stage, and um, picking hues that complement the set or the costumes or the actors or artists. You know, the technology of creating a soundscape, the music or, or the fight sequence, the, the sounds that you hear from scene to scene, the engineering of constructing a form, and in our case, that form is a costume, um, in sometimes, most times for us, an Elizabethan costume, or the mathematics, the geometry of putting a set together, and also, you know, the mathematics of um, the iambic pentameter, you know, and those syllables and those sounds and those verbs. Um, we're really looking at changing the way students in three through eight, through gr grades three through eight, third to eighth grade, engage with Shakespeare. And instead of looking at it as just, um, and not just because the arts are important, obviously, obviously we know that, you know that, we all know that. But how can we, the question we asked ourselves is, how could we make the kids that we work with have an experience that is interdisciplinary, right? Where we're, we're sharing theater with them, which is fun, which is amazing, which enhances soft skills like communication, uh, social engagement, social emotional intelligence, confidence, uh, things like that. But also we're supporting their other class um, classroom curriculums, which is really cool and really fun and really important to us. We're giving them the tools to retain information like actors do when they go out on a stage and they have to remember blocking or they have to remember their lines. Giving them those same skills, those same tools so that they can retain information 
for a standardized test, which, you know, is very controversial. I understand, I know, but the fact of the matter is that these are things that kids have to do in school. How can we, as a theater company, support that and make them successful? How can we complement the work that teachers who we love, principals who we love, are already doing in schools? How can we make their learning processes, their strategies, and their curriculum even more, you know, juicy and tangible and relatable for the kids in their classrooms. And then so we're also, so the two schools, one for sure, and then the one tentatively, we're just waiting for, you know, things get real uh, um, technical behind the scenes, paperwork and all that. Um, two schools where we're working with grades three through eight, some of our teaching artists will be embedded in those schools. And then me, myself, and an assistant will be embedded in a high school, a Detroit public school, where we will be putting on a full performance of Romeo and Juliet, which is really exciting. If this sounds like something that you all want to support, I am going to ask you to please go to shakespeareindetroit.com. On the main page, right in the top right corner, you'll see a button that says donate, and I would ask you to donate whatever you can afford, $5, $10, 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 55 60 <laughs> 100 whatever fits your budget if you if you like what you hear about what we're doing in schools i ask that you support with a monetary donation and and of course we're a nonprofit, so you get a tax write-off for your generosity which is super cool again thank you so much for allowing us into your inbox i know listen every time i open my email i am bombarded with messages that i that i want to See, and those that I don't sometimes. <laughs> and we hope, we're excited that you look forward to hearing from us because we also look forward to hearing from you. So please, if you have um, something that you want to share about a prior experience that you've had with Shakespeare in Detroit, whether you've seen one of our free shows in a park or you've seen our site-specific work or our ticketed productions, you know, we'd love to hear from you. But you can always email us at info, that's I like igloo, in like Nancy, F like Frank, O like orange at shakespeareindetroit.com and we'd love to hear what you think about Shakespeare in Detroit, your experience with us because we're currently, we're working on our school stuff. We're not doing any full on stage productions right now and that's because we're really, really leaning into as far as the work that the public will see, into planning and developing our team and all of those wonderful fun things to make sure that we're a sustainable organization. We're working on that right now in 2019, so by the time 2020 comes, the fall of 2020 comes, we can bring you the best season ever. The best season that you've ever seen at Shakespeare in Detroit. We're really trying to do some things that, in my opinion, are really cool but also just factually speaking, have never really been done in the state of Michigan. I can't tell you about everything. I, one of the things is the schools, which I kind of talked to you about, um, and I'm very excited about sharing more of that as um, we get closer to the fall semester when we'll be embedded with those kids. But there's so many more other cool initiatives that will be happening at Shakespeare and Detroit that mean a lot uh, to me, but more importantly to our community and really changing the game as far as the way that people see, uh, receive, and experience Shakespeare or theater in general. We have, we have some really cool things coming down the pike. So yeah, again, thank you for signing up for this newsletter. More awesome things coming down the pike. We really hope to see some of you in the near future. We have a couple of readings here and there, a couple of inebriated readings. <laughs> yes, I said inebriated. Um, we want to thank also those of you who have uh, signed up for our membership program. So far we have seven of you. We love, we love to get 13 more of you in the next few days so that we can make, make it to a milestone 20 membership um, enrollees. And our membership enrollees, let me tell you, they get some really cool behind the scenes access that we're not giving anybody else. The um, first group that signed up, they got to see our floor plans for our new space that's coming to uh, Detroit's Riverfront in 2020, knock on wood. And then um, we're going to show those who just recently signed up the 
uh, floor plans for some of the exterior of the new building. So things like that, that, you know, we're really, really transparent and we share a lot with our newsletter, but you can really get a deep dive, really get uh, some insights and some backstage access that no one gets if you sign up for that membership program. So go to ShakespeareDetroit.com and click on become a member or the Patreon button in the top right. And you can start uh, getting information from us that nobody gets today. Anyway, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you. Or in the words of Shakespeare, thanks, thanks, and ever thanks for being a part of this journey. And we will talk to you really, really soon.